Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer with sixpackabs.com and today we are talking about intermittent fasting. We're gonna debunk three of the most common myths when it comes down to intermittent fasting. I hear so many people talking about how they wish they could do intermittent fasting, but they're just afraid of these three looming things that are constantly out there on the internet. So let's get down to science, let's get research backed, and let's break down exactly what these three myths are and how I debunk them. The first one that I want to talk about is the fact that everyone thinks they're going to lose a ton of muscle. They think as soon as they stop eating every two hours, all their hard-earned muscle is just going to disappear and fall right off of them. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the science says otherwise. You see, believe it or not, we actually don't start burning up our own muscle tissue until we've been fasting for about 72 hours. Sometimes what ends up happening is we end up losing some of the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles, so we flatten out, so we feel like we've lost muscle, but in reality, all that we've lost is a little bit of intracellular water. One of the things that we have to look at and why your body actually preserves muscle while you're in an intermittent fasting state is that of good old fashioned human growth hormone. And you've heard me talk about it in multiple videos before, but there's one study done by the Journal of Investigation that found that when you're fasting, you have periodic spikes in human growth hormone, whereas ordinarily you have one in the morning and a big one at night. So when you're fasting, you have spikes that happen throughout the day, sometimes every hour. And by the time you get closer to 24 hours, you actually have a spike that is 2,000 times the amount of growth hormone that you normally have in that spike. Now, albeit that's a very short pulse of growth hormone, but it's still a pretty big shot in the arm when it comes down to the fact that human growth hormone preserves muscle and allows your body to burn fat. Then to add insult to injury, you end up having an elevated level of growth hormone for about 36 hours after the time you fast. So you're getting a residual effect as well. But there's actually some more when it comes to fasting that makes it pretty darn fascinating. One study published by the Journal of Endocrinology took two groups of men. Okay, they took one group of men that were morbidly obese, and they took another group of men that had moderate experience with weight training. The results were pretty interesting with both groups when they put them in an intermittent fasting protocol. The obese group saw a 26% increase in something called GNRH, okay? That's gonadotropin releasing hormone. What that is is it stimulates the body to produce testosterone. Okay, so a 26% increase in the obese group. Okay, then the workout group saw a 67% increase in GNRH and led to a 180% increase in testosterone simply by fasting. Yeah, if your mind's not blown, then I don't know what will blow your mind. But there's one more thing that adds to this myth, beta-hydroxybutyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is a ketone body that's produced by the liver that is your predominant source of fuel when you are absent of glucose. When you don't have glucose flooding through the body, your body uses beta-hydroxybutyrate. This beta-hydroxybutyrate in and of itself has a muscle sparing effect and is one of the most energizing compounds that your body can run on. Now let's move in to myth number two, okay? Myth number two is the fact that your metabolism is going to slow down. Because you're not eating, our metabolisms are supposed to slow down. We're supposed to just buy into this school of thought, when in reality, it actually is quite the opposite. You see, when we go through periods of time of not eating, and then we add an influx of food during a short window like we do in an intermittent fasting phase, we spike something called leptin. You see, what leptin is, is a signaling hormone that goes from your fat to your brain. Think of it like a phone call, from your fat cell to your brain, okay? And your fat cell is essentially calling your brain saying, hey brain, just so you know, there's enough fat on hand, you're cool to go ahead and rev up the metabolism as much as you want. But what if you don't have a lot of fat? Well, the thing is, leptin plays a role when you eat, too. Have you ever heard someone talk about the benefits of a cheat meal? How when you have a cheat meal, you get this big spike in special hormones that make it so you burn fat? Well, newsflash, that special hormone is leptin. What if I told you by intermittent fasting, you get the benefits of a cheat meal every single day? You get those hormonal benefits. You see, you're not eating for an extended period of time, then all of a sudden, you eat a bunch of food, predominantly with some glucose in it, and you get this big spike in leptin that triggers your brain to say, okay, cool, there's enough fuel, we can crank up the metabolism. Myth busted. Your metabolism does not slow down. If anything, it speeds up when you're intermittent fasting. Now it's time for me to get super scientific on you, okay? I'm gonna drop some knowledge for this third myth. This myth is that you're gonna have a serious amount of cognitive decline. I talk to so many people that say, I don't wanna fast because I can't afford to lose my mental function. I can't afford to be fatigued. All right. Well, let me debunk that right then and there. 
It has to do with our good old friend beta hydroxybutyrate once again. As you get to know me, you're gonna hear that that's my favorite word. I talk about BHB, beta hydroxybutyrate, all the time. Here's how it works. You see, our brain has this interesting thing. It's called the blood-brain barrier. And normally what that blood-brain barrier does is it protects things from getting inside the brain, even potentially good energy sources. Well, the cool thing is beta-hydroxybutyrate has a way of signaling with the brain that it can actually get into the brain. And here's where the science starts. That beta-hydroxybutyrate gets into the cell, it gets into the mitochondria, and then it breaks down a little bit further. It breaks down into something called acetyl acetate. Okay, and this acetyl acetate is broken down even more into something called acetyl acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, then the acetyl acetyl coenzyme A is broken down even more into acetone and acetyl coenzyme A. Now, acetyl coenzyme A is everything that we want. I don't know if you remember biology class or your sophomore year in high school when you learned about the Krebs cycle, but I'm not going to go too much into detail, but that acetyl coenzyme A is the root of creating adenosine trisphosphate, ATP, the whole reason you take creatine for ATP, for strength, for muscle volume. So yes, that same thing happens in your brain. ATP in your brain means mental energy, means alertness, means cognitive function and awareness. So forget all those people that tell you that intermittent fasting is gonna make you fatigued and make your brain not work. It's actually quite the opposite. Believe it or not, the way it works is through working on synaptic signaling. It actually slows down signaling so that your brain can focus. Yes, it slows down your brain activity. I know it sounds crazy, but a slowed down brain activity means that your brain has the ability to recover. And when your brain can recover, it works faster, even though it has less activity. So there you have it. We focused on the negatives and why we corrected them. Now it's time to focus on the positive. Okay, all the good things that are coming from intermittent fasting. There are so many benefits out there, so many amazing ways that you can kickstart your body into an absolutely revolutionized version of yourself. And it just comes down to obtaining the knowledge, getting the right scientific research in your brain so that you can become exactly what you want to be. Remember, it starts with you and it starts with education. So as always, keep it locked in here with sixpackabs.com. I'm Thomas DeLauer and make sure you let us know if there's any videos that you wanna see or any topics that you'd like Johnny and I to cover here in the near future. I will see you soon.